The number one thing to be sure of when doing Amazon FBA is that the product that you want to sell is actually profitable. We don't wanna be doing this for free. We definitely don't wanna be making a loss. So it's really important that you make sure that the product that you want to sell with Amazon actually generates a profit. So in this video, I'm gonna be walking you through my profit calculator that's completely for free. I've made it just for you guys. And I'm gonna be showing you how to use it so that you can ensure that the product that you found actually generates you a positive return before you actually go ahead and place that order with your supplier. Okay, so this is the tool that I've put together for you guys. It was built in Microsoft Excel, so you'll either need Excel or Google Sheets or OpenOffice or any similar program that can open an Excel document in order to use it. Now, if you're thinking, Janssen, that looks really complicated, like what the heck's going on? Don't worry, we're gonna run through it together now so that by the end of this tutorial, you'll be like, Wow, that was easy. So whenever I put a um, tool together, either for my students or for you guys, I always have this like coding system. So any cell that is yellow like this is for you to change. It's an input cell. Anything else you don't need to worry about, you don't need to change. If you try and change it, it might break the sheet. So just focus on these yellow cells. So let's run through this together now. And what we're gonna be doing is just assuming that I'm new to Amazon FBA and I want to sell a water bottle and I wanna see if it's actually gonna make me any money. So the first thing that we're gonna fill out is the selling price. Now, what I would say is if you're unsure about what price you're going to charge, I would just look at your competition on Amazon and take the average price. I would either do that or just go in line with a single competitor who you think most closely resembles you. I would say, I always say this to students and just in general, don't go with the actual price that you think you're going to charge if it's quite a bit higher than the competition. The main reason being that we want to be conservative in our estimates. So let's just say, for example, the average price in the niche is 10 pounds. It would be pretty risky to go in and be like, yeah, I'm gonna charge 20 pounds because my product's gonna be way better. We want to be conservative so that we can ensure that we're still profitable when we are being conservative. Then there's plenty of upside, plenty more profit to be made if we're actually able to increase our selling price higher. Um, than what we're gonna be putting in here. So let's just say, for example, I've looked on Amazon and the average price in the water bottle niche is 15 pounds. Regardless of whether I think the product is gonna sell for 20 quid or 25 quid, um, I would, as I just mentioned, be conservative here. So um, that's the selling price part done. Now what we need to fill out is the fulfillment fee. Now, when you're doing Amazon FBA, the benefit of it is that you send your goods to an Amazon warehouse and then Amazon takes care of the fulfillment for you, i.e. they will pick, pack and post the product to your customers. So obviously we need to pay Amazon to do that and that is what the fulfillment fee is for. It's essentially postage and packaging. So the way that we can get our fulfillment fee is either by looking in Amazon's fee schedule and looking at like the fees according to the dimensions of the product and the weight, or an easier method is just by looking at a competitor's like listing that most closely resembles the product that we want to sell, and then have a look at what fees Amazon is charging them. So the way that we do that is by clicking this link here, and then Amazon's profitability calculator will load. You'll get this page here, and then you just need to press continue as guest, then what you need to do is find a competitor's listing that resembles yours. So let's just say I'm selling a water bottle that is identical to this. You load the listing and then what you can either do is copy this code here, which is known as the ASIN. So it's like Amazon's identifier number, or you can just simply scroll down to where the product information box is and then you'll see ASIN here and then just double click it or highlight it and press copy. Then you flip back to Amazon's revenue calculator, the fee calculator, come into this box here and then press paste and then press search. And what it will do is it will then pull that listing up and it will pull in all of the details. So let's say um, item price, what were we charging? We were charging 15 pounds. So we'll put in 15 pounds here and then just press calculate and straight away it will tell you the fees that Amazon is charging this seller. So here we can see fulfillment by Amazon fees for this product 
is £2.27. So all we do now is come over to the calculator, fulfillment fee, and then just type in £2.27. It's as easy as that. Now the next fee that we need to consider is the referral fee. So this is basically Amazon's commission for allowing you to sell on their site and get that crazy high traffic that Amazon is very well known for. So it's no different to like when you sell on eBay and you get charged like a selling fee. It's, it's the same thing except it's called referral fee. So again, for estimating this, you can either go into Amazon's fee schedule, look up the category that you're wanting to sell in. So water would be sports and outdoors I guess look that up and then plug it in or again the easier way is just to go back to that fee calculator that we've just done there and have a look so we've plugged in our sales price 15 pounds and we can see where is it the selling on Amazon fee here which is the referral fee is two pounds 25 now what I've done in this calculator is I've set it as a percentage so all you need to do is either work it out on a calculator so £2.25 divided by 15, like that, and press enter. Um, you can either do it in a calculator or you can just do it like what I've just done there. So 15%. Most of Amazon's um, referral fees for categories are 15%. Some are slightly lower. But if you're unsure, if you can't work it out, if you're rubbish at maths, I'd go with 15% and then run it past somebody maybe in the Amazon FBA Smashes group on Facebook or with a friend or whoever, but hopefully you can. The next item that we need to fill out is the landed cost. And this basically means the cost per unit of having your goods manufactured, shipped from your supplier over to an Amazon FBA warehouse. So it includes manufacturing costs, shipping costs, duties, taxes. It includes everything from getting it made all the way to an Amazon fulfillment center. Now, if you don't know how to calculate this, well, there's a number of ways. You can either use my landed cost calculator, and I'll put a link for that in the corner. I have um, talked about that in a previous video, or you can work it out yourself just by basically by talking to a supplier, finding out what the manufacturing cost is, then getting a quote for shipping, um, and then kind of just working it out yourself. So let's just say, for example, I've done all of that myself. I've spoken with suppliers, I've spoken with shipping companies and I've calculated it. And my landed cost of a water bottle is three pounds 50, okay, three pounds 50. Now the next thing is the storage cost. So again, with Amazon FBA, we are able to benefit because we don't have to store goods at our house or we don't have to have our own warehouse. We can store it in an Amazon FBA warehouse. Now, previously, this was actually quite hard to estimate because Amazon didn't have it in their Amazon fee calculator. They just kind of expect you to work it out based on storage costs. But recently, they have updated the FBA fee calculator. You can see it here, storage costs. So what you need to do in order to be able to estimate this is you need to tell Amazon how many units you're expecting to sell on a monthly basis. So what I would do again, guys, is try and stay conservative. I would use the estimates provided by Jungle Scout or Helium 10, take an average and then of all of the sellers in the niche. And then you can either go with that or give yourself a slight haircut. So let's just say, for example, I went into the water bottle niche, I ran Helium 10 and it told me that on average sellers were selling 500 units a month. So what I would be minded to do here is where it says estimated monthly sales, I would probably take a small haircut and I'd say, okay, let's assume that we're selling 350 units per month. And where it says here, average inventory units stored. I mean, ideally you want to have say two months worth of stock. So I'd probably double that. So 700 units and we're selling 350 per month. Press calculate and then you can see here your storage cost is coming out at a whopping six pence per unit. So obviously it's gonna be a bit higher than that because you are you don't pay storage cost per unit, you pay for all of it. But when we're working out profitability on a per unit basis, this is the way you do it. So six pence storage cost for our water bottle per month. So you put in six pence. Then the next line item we want to fill out is PPC. So that stands for pay-per-click advertising. So when you're selling with Amazon, with Amazon FBA, or just fulfilling yourself, you can advertise within the Amazon platform. So you can pay to get your product on the first page or in a prominent position where lots of customers are going to see it. 
Now, the ACOS stands for Advertising Cost of Sale, and it basically means what are your advertising costs going to be as a proportion of your sales price. Now, this does vary niche to niche and based on how much optimi how optimized your listing is. I would say that a reasonable assumption to make in the long term is that your ACOS is going to be between 25 to 30%. It can be lower, it can be higher. I mean, feel free to play around with this. I would go here, just in this example, with 25%. Uh, but as I say, you can have a play around with that and, and see you know, what happens to your profit margins. But for me, my ACOS is around 25%. Now, of course, all of your sales won't be driven through advertising. Hopefully, you're going to make sales and then eventually Amazon's going to reward you for making sales by putting you like in a naturally good position. So let's say, for example, someone types in water bottle. Amazon might say, hey, Janssen's water bottle sells really well, so we're gonna put him on the front page when somebody types in water bottle. So that means that I'm able to make sales without pay-per-click advertising. I will st still have some sales with advertising, but not all of my sales will be from it. So that's why it's important to include the percentage here of organic sales that you're making, i.e. sales that you're getting without advertising. Now, I would say a good target to be making here long-term is 60% plus. So with my products that I sell with Amazon FBA, I had a look the other day and around 20% of my sales are through PPC, so they're inorganic, I'm paying, and 80% are organic, so I'm getting those naturally. But to be conservative, when you're very first starting, I'd probably go a bit lower than that. So I would say organic sales, maybe 50%, could go higher, could go 60, 70%. Again, this is just about stress testing and kind of seeing whether you'd like to be profitable or not. You can have a play around, around with it and see. So let's just say here, 50% of my sales are gonna be organic and 50% are gonna be through advertising. Then the final input box that we need to fill out together is the refund percentage. Now, unfortunately, refunds happen like in every single niche. Um, and the bad thing is that you do get charged for it. So you don't get your fulfillment um, fee back because Amazon's obviously posted your item out to the customer, the customer's gone, either it doesn't work or I don't want it anymore or whatever. Whatever they say, you still get, you still like lose the fee for that. So um, it's important that you account for refunds like when you're doing your profitability analysis. Now, um, depending on the niche, like refund percentages can differ. If you're selling clothes, then I would imagine that your proportion of refunds would be quite high. Whereas if you're selling, you know, something basic like a water bottle, then your refund percentage would probably be quite low. Now for me, my proportion is around three or 4%, but just to be kind of conservative, I'd probably go with 5% here. Again, I've just said this a few times now, it's important to test all different scenarios so that you can see kind of like a worst case scenario and then a best case scenario and then decide whether you want to go ahead with your product. So we've now filled everything out and you can see that it's all the profitability calculator at the top is filled out for us. So you can see all of the costs that we've just run through together. And then you can see that profit after pay-per-click advertising after everything is £3.59. So that's a 24% profit margin. Now what I've done here to kind of help you guys assess whether that's good or not is I've done a little profit margin barometer. So if you can find a product that is 40% profit margin after everything, then that's not just great actually, that's like fantastic. That is really, really good and you found a very good product. I'd say it's quite unlikely, but you never know. Um, then if you can find a product that's 30% or plus, that's good, that's really good actually, especially after advertising. So again, if you can do that, give yourself a pat on the back. Then okay, so I would say 15% plus after advertising, after everything, that is fairly standard and that's kind of, I'd say, the minimum that you should be aiming for. If you find a product that is below 15%, then I would be I would be a bit more cautious and tread carefully. Um, the, the main reason being that, you know, some of these costs here are estimates. So the refund percentage and your advertising cost, they are estimates, so they may be a bit higher, which is why it's really important that you do your stress testing here. So let's just say here, for example, 
Uh, the profit margin is 24%, and I'm like, yeah, that's good. That's good. I'm pretty happy with that. It's important that, say, you then test it. So selling price, £15. So I should therefore go, okay, £15. What happens if I can't sell them at 15 What happens to my profit margin at £13? Oh, it's 17%. That's still okay. See what I mean? So it's all about testing. And again, saying maybe if you go, okay, what happens if my pay-per-click cost is a bit higher? If it's 30%, what happens there? Okay, profit margin 21%, that's still, still good. So here you can see um, that we've got £3.59. So, you know, if I were to be selling 200 units a month or however much I've estimated, £700 profit a month from not really doing a great deal. It's pretty good, right? And hopefully your sales will be even higher than that. And, you know, happy days. Um, one other thing to point out, guys, is this here, these figures here, you can change. So if you personally think, Janssen's wrong, I think great should be 30%. You can just type 30% here, then you can change good to 20%, you can change okay to 10%, and you can change risky to below 10%. And this color scheme here will automatically change to match whatever you put in here. So I hope you like that little nifty feature. That's me being an absolute geek there, <laughs> putting that in for you. Um, but as long as it makes it easier for you guys to get on with your Amazon FBA journeys, then whatever, I'll be a massive geek. So um, that is the profit calculator. It's completely free, as I say. If you would like it, there's gonna be a link in the description below. You just need to um, provide your name and email and you'll get a link for that. And you'll also get links for the landed cost calculator and a few of the like, little tools that I've built for you um, sent to you in that email as well. So that is it for this week, guys. I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope you've learned something from it. If you have, please remember to give a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you aren't already. See you next time, guys. Enjoy your week. I'm out of here. <laughs>